Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining today's presentation of Driving Performance Meets Data Performance. This is an opportunity for us to interview Michael Taylor, the IT Director with the Mercedes AMG Patronus F1 team. With that, I'd like to introduce my guest, uh, Mr. Taylor and Michael, ask you to give the audience a brief overview of who you are and what you do for the Mercedes team. Hi, Scott. First of all, thank you very much. It's, it's great to be able to join you today, um, although obviously remotely. Um, so in terms of me, I, I am the IT director for Mercedes-AMG Petronas Formula One team. Um, with my role uh, comes the responsibility of, of all aspects of IT across the team. So factory-based operations uh, through to, uh, to the track side. Um, I'm a bit of an industry veteran in the world of Formula One and technology. Uh, this is my 19th. 19th year in the sport. I spent 13 years with a competitor before joining uh, Mercedes um, just over five years ago. And it's only recently that I've actually taken on the role of IT director. Um, the last three years I have been leading uh, a, a digital engineering transformation group that focuses on the kind of the, the value adds elements of business related IT. So looking at how we can digitize our, our platform, our tool set, um, and enhance the experience of our users across all aspects of our operation. Well, Michael, thanks so much for that overview. 19 years, that's, that's incredible. I know that when we think about a sport such as F1 racing, you know, the media tends to focus on the vehicle, the driver and the different crewmen that are responsible for keeping that vehicle running and, and winning that, that first place trophy. But I have to imagine that behind the scenes, there's a massive amount of data that goes into creating a winning team. So could you give the audience an overview of how data is a core component of the business that you're asked to support? It's really actually an interesting uh, question and challenge. I mean, Formula One um, has been data enabled for many, many years. Um, it, it started uh, with a stopwatch and a clipboard. Um, and is obviously now involved into an impressive array of, of software and hardware solutions that just about cover every aspect of our operation. Um, if you think about the car that we race, the, the instrumentation on that car, um, the level or the numbers, uh, the number of data points that we that we generate uh, whilst the car is on track. Um, but it's important important to understand that it's it's not just limited to when that car is on track. It may be a virtual car. Uh, on a dyno or in a simulator, you know, we generate the same numbers of data points. So it's it probably no surprise that there's over a billion data points generated. Um, and that leads to terabytes and terabytes of data generated uh, over the course of a race weekend or over the course of the season. Obviously, all of that data is of significant importance to our organization. Um, you know, our channel doesn't just end there. Um, it, it's not just the instrumentation of the race car. Um, every aspect of our business is, is, is instrumented um, from our social media engagements uh, through to lean um, and complex manufacturing um, and everything else you can imagine in between. So data really is a fundamental and core part of our business, but I think it's, it's more important than that. Um, it's it's an, a fundamental part of our decision making. Well, wow. Michael, so from stopwatches to now data-driven racing, that is just, I'm just, I'm blown away by what you just shared there in terms of the different components of the vehicle producing elements of, of data bits that need to be aggregated together in a way that allow you uh, to provide a more cohesive digital story uh, to the folks that need to make those decisions in such a critical fashion. I was wondering, you know, if you think about all of that data coming in and all of the responsibilities that are applied to you and your team, could you pick just maybe the top three data specific initiatives uh, that are top of mind for you today? Certainly Scott, I'll, I'll, I'll give that a try. It's a pretty tough ask though, to be honest, just the uh, top three. So you know, like every organization, data is at the heart of, of everything that we do. Um, I think in terms of our top three data specific initiatives, uh, reducing the operational friction, um, focusing on organizational agility, enabling um, data to, to be there to, for users to make the most efficient uh, and effective decision making is, is, a, is a key component, a key focus. Um, likewise, enriching our data uh, 
to make it more accessible is, is also up there in terms of our, uh, our top three data specific uh, initiatives. You know, be that tag in, um, adding additional metadata uh, or establishing relationships between disparate data sets. And then of, of course, any, any kind of data specific organization has to have uh, a strong data governance strategy in place. And data governance is, is, is again, has to be up there in terms of our, our top three initiatives. You know, we want to ensure that we govern our data um, to, to provide a simple, um, single, consistent, and indisputable version of the truth for our engineering community. We, we want to make sure that the data quality and the pertinence of the data is there. It's the factual truth that they can then use to make their decisions from. I think it's fair to say many organizations are data driven um, and we're no different. However, our objective is, is to take the next step and make the most effective use of every aspect of that data. So our focus is turning more away from data driven decision making um, and focusing much more on knowledge driven decision making. I think aspirationally it's quite a big ask and it's going to take the support of our many partners and clearly pure going to have a prominent role to play in enabling us on this journey. Michael, you're right. It, you know, it, it, is a, it is a tall ask to request you to pick three of, I am sure, hundreds of, of initiatives that you're being asked to take a look at. And I really appreciate you honing in on the notion of reducing operational friction, you know, enriching the data sets themselves and applying strict governance rules to them. But the one thing that you really said that I picked up on, uh, and, and I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, because I think it is so powerful, is the sense of responsibility that you have to make uh, the most effective use of every aspect of data, of the highest quality, mind you, so that your organization can make knowledge-driven decisions. I think that is just insanely powerful, and it's something that I would love to see more organizations you know, take responsibility for, and I'm sure they are. I have no doubt that they are, but I love how you stated that and how relevant that might be to creating the kind of organization uh, that you have, let alone the kind of winning team uh, that you've been able to, uh, to establish and command across the globe. But, you know, I'm sure that with all of that data coming in, uh, you know, governance being one aspect, safeguarding being the other. So what approaches are you taking today to safeguard that data and ensure that it doesn't get lost and is always available to your team? Of course, Scott, you're absolutely right. I mean, safeguard, uh, safeguarding our data is, is, is essential for, for the business. And you know, we have all of the very traditional measures and, and controls available to us. Um, they've been around for many, many years. You know, things such as process, um, access control, permissioning, um, and of course, education too. But thankfully, the world of technology has moved on um, significantly. And, and thanks to the extensive portfolio of Pure, um, over and above the, the, the physical hardware um, components. The IT team are armed with uh, a raft of intelligent technology that really helps us in, in, in terms of looking after and securing and, and safeguarding our data. So we are heavy users of active cluster technology, um, but it's not only used as a safeguarding uh, method. Um, we, it, it also enables seamless, transparent mobility of virtualized workloads between data centers um, to maximize the use of our, uh, our resources. And on top of uh, active cluster technology and data replication, you know, that, that's great, absolutely, but we don't stop there. We make great use of protection groups, and on top of that, we complement it with snapshot technology. It's used extensively across, across the organization. I think finally, though, the, uh, the use and simplicity of, of Pure One you know, offers our team, my team specifically, a seamless, insightful, real time monitoring and measuring solution that ensures we have our finger on the pulse and we're aware of um, our storage infrastructure at any point in time, wherever we may be across the globe. So, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of our virtual session. I'd like you all to join me in thanking Michael Taylor from the Mercedes AMG F1 team for joining us on this call and providing valuable insight as to how data is relevant to his organization 
and man, this is probably the closest I'm going to get beyond the television screen uh, to being around an F1 team. So Michael, thank you very much uh, for, for allocating that time today. Scott, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, I hope everyone enjoys the, uh, the rest of Pure Accelerate.